What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I have a ton of footage coming up for you today. Pretty much perfect timing right before the drift season, right before show season. So uh, first thing what we're gonna just dive right into is actually working on the Daily Z. What I noticed is uh, I was actually in this driveway uh, for Easter weekend and I basically pulled up and I had the car sit for like a little bit and then I had to like move my car because there were like a lot of people here. So I basically like backed out and when I backed out, uh, I got out of the car and someone was like, you're leaking something. I was like, what do you mean I'm leaking something? I just did like completely resealed like the entire car. I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, look, like you can see. And like, since it was raining out, there was like kind of like, there's like every little drop you could see, but it expanded. So it made it look like it was a lot more of uh, whatever it was. So as I was turning and to straighten out my car this way, it stopped and I would be able to like reverse and go forward and there would be like little drops. But if I turned, it was a lot more. So I was like, I wonder what's actually going on. Like, I wonder what's happening. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like if it was oil, maybe like if I was like revving the car and I like was putting, adding pressure into the system, uh, maybe it was like spitting oil out somewhere or whatnot. I, I just couldn't understand like what was going on. I was like, maybe it's power steering. Uh, like the rack might be leaking. And uh, no, so basically we came to find out, uh, I went home, drove home, put the car in the air, in the rear, and I noticed that like the rear was dripping and I was like, I wonder what that is. Come to find out it was the diff, so it was diff fluid. And uh, as I looked up under this heat shield, so get you guys in here. I came under the car and this heat shield, so where the drive shaft sits, there's a heat shield like right there. It was covered in fluid. And then I dropped the heat shield and took it out to like clean it up to see. And then the top of like the body itself was coated. And I was like, holy crap. Um, so I talked to the boys and they believe if we're looking at the diff, our my front pinion seal, that's the problem that's what they believe the problem is and uh i trust them and basically they were saying that like the fluid is probably leaking out of there forward and then it's just like swashing around like when i'm driving or whatnot so what we're gonna be working on today is mainly the diff removal um how what kind of fluid that you should be putting in your diff and uh the steps on how to remove the diff uh so we're just gonna get right into it now first things first um what you want to run in your diff okay is the 75W90 red line. Uh, I don't run this in the drift car because my diff's welded in the drift car and it gets beat up a lot more. Um, I know that this is like the best of the best of the best, so I put the best of the best in the daily. For the drift car, I still do 7590, but it's like a different brand. I think it's like Castrol or I do Lucas or something like that. So it is what it is. I did get more MT90 um, just because I think I'm gonna do the transmission on the drift car. Um, like, like just drain the fluid. I haven't done that in like two years, so I should probably do that. Um, I got some exhaust gaskets because what we're going to have to do is drop the exhaust. Um, it's just going to be helpful for me because I have a little surprise to show you guys too. And I got all my diff seals. So pinion seals in the big one. I got the two side ones. And then I also got the rear train transmission, uh, seal also, by the way, sorry, I got my I bought the complete rear kit of the Power Tricks arms, so I bought the complete rear set for camber because if you guys want to see my camber wear, I know I'm kind of like ADD in right now, but as you can see, like this tire is pretty even with the wear, so that side wasn't the issue. It's this side, and if you see, this is completely bald. And then this t edge of the tire has not even touched. This is literally brand new. All this is brand new. So I had an issue with my arms before. They were kind of pretty locked up and seized. So I, I got the complete rear set. The only issue is, is that Power Tricks did not tell me that um, they didn't have any rear camber arms and it wasn't on their website. So th they sent me these in like super fast time, like super easy contact. And then I got an email like two days later saying, hey, the reason why you don't have your camber arms is because they're on back order for 40 to 60 days. And I was like, I got an event like very soon. Like, why wasn't this posted? Like, it, clearly it should have been posted, but 
it is what it is. So then I hit up the homies at GK Tech, um, and they sent me their rear camber arms. So since they sent me out their rear camber arms, I'm running the rear Power Tricks rear uh, traction rods, and then Power Tricks rear tow rods. And then when I get those rear camber arms from Power Tricks, I'll probably just sell those out. So if you guys are looking for some rear camber arms, hit me up in the DMs. I'll give you a good deal on them. Uh, but yeah, so I got the arms to do on this. And then I got all that other work to do on that. So we got footage coming off for you guys. It's crazy how much the pandemic has increased the price in tires. I was getting two Federal 595s pretty, for a pretty sick deal. Now they're double the price of what I was paying for one. Crazy. Like for one. It's insane. It's blowing my mind. Louie and Jesse were talking to someone and they were telling us um, because even Kendas right now, Kendas are like impossible to get. So they were talking to someone. They were like, listen, there's a brand out there. I'm not going to disclose this because we need all those tires. Um, there's a brand out there that basically is on the same level as Kendas and uh, that they have last pretty long. So those were what you saw over there. Now we're going to get into this whole diff situation. And uh, let's see how much fluid I lost and if there is any fluid in my diff right now. <laughs> All right, we had fluid in there. Oh, it smells so bad. Definitely had fluid, so that's good. It gives me a little bit less of a uh, heart attack, I'll tell you that. Now, since we have that draining, um, it's going to keep doing its thing for a little bit, as you can see that stream coming down. Um, as we're doing that, what we're going to need to do is work on removing our exhaust. So, first things first, we're going to come towards the middle of the car. And what we need to do is we need to remove these four bolts. That basically helps support the exhaust um, across the frame rails. And then we need to go to the front and do the six bolts uh, from the headers down to the downpipes. So we need to do those six bolts and then we need to do this. And then we'll go through and we have to just take the exhaust off the hangers and we can take it down and drag her out. Exhaust is down, okay? Little trick is um what you do is you loosen everything up in the rear and then you loosen everything up in the front make sure that you break the seals between the header and the downpipe and then that bracket here you want to leave that here until you are able to do all that then before you take this middle bracket off what you want to do is put your jack right between the middle of the cats jack it up a little bit take that bracket off and then you'll slowly be able to just drop the exhaust off and then you can just pull it right through the back so that's what i did now basically what we have to do is uh do our axle bolts so on my 92 i have five so we're gonna have to do each side and then we have to do the drive shaft bolts there's four on the drive shaft after that we're gonna have to get into these and then these, and then we'll have the jack under the, the diff, and then we'll be able to lower the diff. So now, um, when you do two of your bolts, uh, two of the drive shaft bolts, basically you're gonna have to go in, take it out of gear, turn the drive shaft, and then put it back in gear. So then uh, it'll be sturdy enough where you don't have to like hold the drive shaft and try to break them loose. Since we got this part of the drive shaft out, I need to release these two bolts here. Release these two bolts. I'll be able to slip the slip yoke out, and then we'll be able to put the one sh one uh, one piece in after that. But for right now, I just got to get this off so then I can take the rest of the bolts out of the diff. Yep. Once you get this center carrier bearing uh, unbolted, it's going to sag, so you just want to make sure that you protect your face so you don't catch a drive shaft to the face. The whole thing shouldn't come totally out because you have to um, get the drive shaft out of the pinion, out of the diff, and then you also have to take the slip yoke out, so it shouldn't like totally fall on your face, but it will sag. And the drive shaft is somewhat heavy, so just remember that. Okay, so see, that's the drive shaft sagging. So now what we need to do is pop the back of this off. 
like that. And now I'm going to move my head out of the way so I don't get smoked. And then we're going to slip the slip yoke out like that. Voila, drive shaft out. So if you guys want to look at the difference between the drive shafts. Okay, so now with the drive shaft out, with the exhaust down, now let's get to those axle bolts and then we'll finally get to the diff. Robbie's back. True. I was trying to do it on this side. I don't know how to do it on this side. So. Robbie is back. So the uh, lock washer here was on the outside. Lock washer on the outside. Yep. Lock washer and nut on the outside. The bolt comes from the inside and goes out. Yeah. yeah. So you guys might run into an issue with the clearance of a long deep socket and the uh, spare tire well here. Um, so the kit that I have, we just tried and uh, it actually worked. So it's not a deep socket. It's it's not a short socket either. It's like right in between both. And uh, yeah, so he just made it work. So uh, well, it comes down at a weird angle because these rear studs. Yeah, so yeah. You, you have to like, yeah. Yeah, so the jack sometimes doesn't really help. Yeah. Getting but, it back in, it might be a little more. See this? See how close it's getting? Okay, yeah. So this is where we were talking about if you have like a long socket or like a different kind of ratchet, it's starting, to, when you're, as you're backing this out, it's starting to push the ratcheting set back into the spare tire well. So this is one thing that you gotta like worry about. With a longer socket, it would be binding up right now. Yeah. Like if you had a ratchet on there, it'd yeah. get pinched. Oh yeah. Alright, you can put the Don't put a lot of tension on it. Alright. Alright, you're good. Go forward. Alright, come down. Down. Oh, we gotta do the sensors. Okay guys, so if you guys are looking, there's two clips here and here, and this is holding up the wiring for the speed sensors going into the diff. So Robbie's saying we disconnect or we take this out and then we just disconnect the wire and then the sensors will still be in the diff. There is a preload on this front bearing here. This diff so that it doesn't have too much tension, make sure that it's got just enough. So um, you want to mark this just to make things a little easier installing things so this way the nut goes back in the same spot we don't have white out right now so we're using nail polish yep so they made two markings just so we know kind of how we're setting the preload. So now we got the gun. Um, this size nut is a one in one sixteen. So we had to run to AutoZone to go get this guy real quick. So now we're gonna zap her off. Please got that. Yeah, woo! You got lucky. Not really pressed on, but it is on these uh, splines pretty well. All right, using the pulley puller. I'm gonna show you guys what we did here. Robbie just gave me a quick rundown because he's got some stuff to do. So uh, I'm gonna show you exactly what we have to do to the other side. Um, but he really, I really want him to help me with this because this is the most important part. So once we got that off, yep. 
Oh, yep. Yeah. We're good. So we have that all marked up. So what we did, we also marked like right by like where the end of the threads are, just to make sure that we have, we're gonna have our splines in somewhat the in the same location that we had them before. And then you can see this is where it's been leaking. So we need to get this seal out of here. Yep. There she go. She was in there. Yep. We are riding right here, so we're not yeah, riding we're not on the outside. On the outside. Edge. There's no scoring. Good. It actually shows in the factory service manual a guy using a flathead, so. Yeah. Just so you guys know, FSM says use a flathead to remove it in the picture. So we don't want to hear your comments, all right? We don't want to hear them. Okay, so now this is the most important part, guys. We have our splines matched back up with our uh, nail polish that we used, okay? Uh, the seal's in, nice and flush. So now all we need to do is set the preload on the bearing. All right, guys, so obviously, with the great help of Robbie, the Z guru, look at his freaking sweatshirt. Don't give us shit, guys. That's all I'm saying. Um, so basically, we got everything matched up to exactly how we had it matched up with the splines and whatnot. We checked the preload again by it's mostly by feel. That's what Robbie's taught me, and it's pretty much exactly where we had it. So we're sitting pretty good. I mean, it feels pretty much the same way that we had it. Um, Before you guys start taking this apart, you really, really need to get a feel for how um how the pinion feels before you disassemble because it has to match exactly when you put it back together if it's a little bit looser you're gonna have a bear bearing failure if you're gonna be a little bit tighter it's gonna have bearing failure so you really have to feel the tension that it takes to rotate this make sure that it's the same it's not too loose and also I'm not sure you can hear it in the video but you'll feel it there's gonna be a little click Okay, that little click, that's the gear lash between the pinion gear and the ring gear. Okay, you want to make sure that, that that click is the same. You want to make sure that you don't travel too far between that little click. Because if you get too much gear lash, it's going to cause the gears to wear out on you. And then you there goes the You have to make sure that this pinion is set, which is why we put these marks. If we you have look, two marks. You look... Our, our red line and our black lines line up again yep. they're, and they're in the same spot so and the tension feels about the same but you want to make sure that you're not about one full rotation back because it'll feel a little too loose mm -hmm. or one full rotation in it'll be too tight you you want to make sure that those those lines are pretty lined up thanks homie as always freaking can't wait for the season boy can't wait for the season i can't wait to get back i'm gonna be freaking working on this thing and we're gonna get after it this year. I can't wait. So 2021 is gonna be a sick one for the boys for sure. But you're the man, Robbie. Okay, so now since we got the scary part out of the this build out of the way, um, Robbie taught me this very quickly, very simply of how to uh, replace the side seals. Um, so the main thing what you gotta do is uh, you can grab like a rubber mallet or whatnot, and they're they're pretty simple to pop out. So they're gonna pop out, and then you're gonna put this off the side. You have your dust shield here. Your dust shield basically just sits right in here. And all you need to do is just get it like a nice slim little uh, flathead, put it between the diff and the uh, dust shield here. And then you can kind of just go ahead and pry around little by little by little, and it'll pop out. So now, the seal that we had here on the side looks like this. It basically just looks a bit uh, practically the same as the uh, pinion seal, um, just a little bit smaller. So the lip part here, as you can see, goes out towards you. The other part, the like more thick part, goes towards the actual inside of the diff. So there could be many ways to get this seal out, which obviously I'll show you on this side, but mainly what we used was just a pry bar. Um, 
the main thing that you want to do is you don't want to score the inside race of the diff itself. So um, I'll show you the technique on how to do that. But since I got it out right now, so now what I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean up this interior here, use some brake clean, get like whatever dust that, like, that might have been since we had it out and whatnot. I'm going to clean up just the edge of this here just a little bit and then uh, like with a scotch bright pad and then from there we're just going to go in and uh, basically just replace the seal. First thing I'll do, just go ahead and take my screwdriver and just, this isn't the inside where the uh, seal actually sits, this is just where the dust shield sits but since it is kind of rusty it might be a little tough to get that dust shield back into place so right now I just stuffed it with a, a rag and I'm just cleaning off all this this extra of rust here so we can get that dust shield back on nice and easily. Now I'm gonna grab my scotch Bright pad right here. I'm just gonna go around so now this is the inside of that race where we don't want to score And we're just cleaning it up. Because you can kind of see where the seal was sitting. And you can kind of see like that. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't call it rust. Maybe it's just like older fluid sitting there. But you can kind of see that it's wearing away. Because I'm using the scotch bright pad. Which we want. Because we want a nice good seal. Some brake clean in there. Wipe that up. So grab our new seal, I'm just going to lubricate it, I'm going to place it inside the inside race, make it centered just a bit, you don't want to push it in too hard here because what we're going to need to do is grab a socket that's big enough that's gonna fit around this seal. So then we can just kind of tap it and then it'll sit flush here. Okay guys, and then once you get the seal in and it's nice and flush all the way around, then all you have to do is pretty much just put your heat uh, protector or the dust shield back on and then we just slide that yoke back into the diff. Okay, so after I got that dust shield back on, I. Uh, got the input shaft or the axle shaft back into the diff here so now uh, I'm gonna do show you guys this side now so this side has not been done nothing's been touched yet so this is what we're gonna do so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hammer this out so and also I did want to show you guys the shafts um, on each side aren't the same length one's longer than the other so I just a little tidbit for you all right guys so got it out this is the short one. It's a little bit tougher because it has this clip here, this ring. So this also helps like lock it in and stuff. So yeah, a little bit tougher, but all good. So next thing you want to do is you're going to want to uh, plug up this hole because you're going to want to get this rusty dust shield off. and then it'll pop right off. So, because if you bend it, then it won't really have that integrity to, so if when you do clean it off, you won't be able to put it on right, because it'll be all bent. Okay, so the reason why to put that rag in there, let's leave that there for now. Got that off, so um, what you'll want to do again, is just go around, clean all this rust off of this, clean the rust off of that around the edge, so what I'm going to do now is just clean off this rusty edge with the seal in there, the old seal in there already, because it's going to help provide a barrier of the rust with the rust. And this is just that heat shield outer rim part that sees a lot of the elements. So now to the part of removing this, again to the F FSM all they used was a flathead. So I'm just using a bigger flathead. So now here, 
This is the part where Robbie was, uh, like I was talking to you about and Robbie was telling me, is that you don't want to score the inner race where this seal sits. So the seal has a couple lips, and what you want to do is just get um, on this part of the lip and just pry it out. Just nice and easy. Again, make sure you don't go too far deep because if you go too far deep, you will score the, uh, the race. And again, we don't want to do that. And there we go. Popped right out. And go around. And it looks nice, not scored, nice and symmetrical. So buy with this one. Then all I'm gonna do is just reverse the steps now. So um, I have my new seal. I'm gonna press this down for a second. I'm gonna go in here, grab the scotch bright, and sand all this uh, excess uh, debris, rust, and like that old just uh, seal if it's still on there you can you'll definitely see like a uh some sort of like brown ring and you don't want to see that brown ring you want to see like the silver the clean silver so just got my new seal and i put a little bit of uh this diff fluid on there the diff fluid that i ran in the drift car that i spoke to you guys about before get that nice and lubed up And then again, make sure it's, oh, not like that. Make sure it's set evenly starting off. Because if you don't have it set evenly starting off, it's not gonna, uh, it won't sit right. When you, if you don't start it right. Okay, there we go. So that's nice and started off. And then again, you're just gonna use a, a socket that fits right over this and you're just gonna slowly tap it in. Okay, so since now we have the seal nice and sat, all we're gonna do is put our dust shield on and uh, put the axle shaft back in and we should be good to go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fill plug out right here and I'm gonna fill it up with two quarts. Typically, Robbie said it takes about one and a half or whatnot, but the best way to do this is Fill it up, put the fill plug back in. Then once we uh, load it up, you wanna make sure that your car is level. Once your car is level, any excess, when you actually take out the fill plug again, it'll actually drain out, out of the fill plug. And then once it stops, then that's where you, it should be at. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Fill it up, put the fill plug in, put this back up, bolt it up, then take the bolt out, let it drain out until it stops and then put the plug back in and good to go. So much easier to fill it up this way than it is the other way. She drank and getting that good, good. Alrighty, so everything is anti-seized. Um, the front of the diff is put back up. All those bolts are anti-seized, so now I'm working on the rear bolts. And then from the rear bolts, uh, we're gonna drain out the rest of the diff um, to see whatever excess levels left. And then after that, uh, we well, just got to put the axles up, the drive shaft, and then repeat all the steps of putting everything back together. So on the home stretch here, best bet here is get the slip yoke in first, like that all the way. And then we're going to get this guy in here. Okay, drive shaft's up. Now we just got to get the exhaust up and we're done. Alrighty guys, down back on the ground. The diff is practically brand new now. All brand new seals, good to go. Um, the one piece drive shaft's in, good to go. And yeah, now it's just time to clean up out here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this girl. So video two will be out real soon. Working on these arms from Power Tricks and GK Tech. Alrighty guys, so she's dropped down. Drive shaft's up, the exhaust is back up, everything's back up, and uh, I didn't get to drive it yet, so uh, we'll see how it goes, but I'm pretty sure that everything's gonna be fine. Like I said, uh, I've had Robbie have my back this whole time, and uh, yeah, so everything's pretty much mounted up, back to normal. One piece drive shaft, let's freaking go. My first one ever, so 
we'll see how that feels but uh yeah i'll definitely keep you guys updated again um this took me about all day um i mean if you guys have like a lift and whatnot like there's just a lot of like things that little tidbits that have to you have to make do when you don't have all your tools in a shop and whatnot so but that's what makes this channel interesting right like i'm doing everything like with like minimalist tools and knowledge i would say like i mean i go in and i do any of this i do research before i actually get the parts and do it and then i always reach out to mark or robbie and if they are, are able to come through to help me out then they always come through and help me out which i really appreciate again robbie thank you so much but um if i can do it you guys can do it if you guys follow these simple steps it's so easy and so simple like all this was the hardest part was like getting a pulley puller to pull out that for like front pinion and then all you do is just get a big enough socket and just slowly take your time and make those gaskets or uh, those seals go in correctly and sit correctly and that's it like everything else is just taking stuff off like by nut by bolt that's that's it so hopefully you guys found this tutor tutorial beneficial um i am going to start working on those arms what i'm going to do is go take those brand new arms uh back to my house i'm going to anti seize them and actually i'll show you guys a little trick later on on how to uh get them within the ballpark of what length they should be at before you actually have to go and get in alignment because once you get in alignment i mean it's you, like that's i i want to get as close as i can so i can drive that car to the alignment shop get it aligned and then i'm good to go so uh i don't want to just throw the arms on and say f it and then like have a crazy alignment trying to get to the alignment shop so that'll be in the next video hopefully you guys enjoyed this one again i tried to make it as simple and as dummy proof as possible if you guys have any questions again just leave the comments down below or hit us up in the dms and uh make sure you guys order your t-shirts man it helps me out a lot so i can do stuff like this and uh whoever has ordered the t-shirts i appreciate you guys and if you guys have been a subscriber since the beginning i am so thankful for you guys so I hope you guys know that, and uh, like I said, stay tuned. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, and if you guys want to check any additional content, click one of these links here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.